I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Peter here. Welcome to the first episode of SFF Spotlight in the year 2023. And this is uh, SFF Spotlight episode 19. And I know that it has been almost uh, almost three weeks, I think, since my last episode, my last SFF Spotlight episode, but uh, apparently, in the last week of December, understandably, there weren't too many news going on, except for State of Sanderson 2022, which I will certainly address in this video. But for those of you who are new to SFF Spotlight, this is a series of videos where I talk about new cover reveals, new book news, new book announcement, new special edition, and also a new noteworthy release in the adult science fiction and fantasy genre. And today we have about 18 topics to talk about. There are plenty of amazing so published fantasy news I would like to talk about in today's episode as well. But first, let's start from State of Sanderson 2022. The first three topics are all related to State of Sanderson. If you're familiar to those already, feel free to skip that. But I would like to talk about the Audible situation as well in today's episode because uh, in my last SFS Spotlight episode, after I posted my video, Sanderson posted the state of Sanderson. It was just so infuriating. What a timing, right? And so I will have to fit those into today. And the first one is the title of the book five of the Stormlight Archive series. It has been revealed by Sanderson himself that the title of book five will most likely be Knights of Wind and Truth. I like this title, it is a bit of a mouthful, but I think it's fitting to the series. And I'm curious about this book so much. It is easily one of my most anticipated books of all time. And I guess we'll find out eventually whether Thor books will change the title of book five or not, because even Brandon Sanderson himself said that he's not sure that the title will be fixed until the release date. And the second piece of news is about Words of Radiance, the second book in the Stormlight Archive series, Words of Radiance Kickstarter. In the state of Sanderson, it has been revealed that the Kickstarter campaign for this one will be delayed to fall 2023 instead. Initially, it was slated to begin in March 2023, and I'm kind of glad for this because I really want to get this one. But the moment I actually pledge on this Kickstarter, it will instantly be the most expensive books that I ever bought on my own. And before that happened, I really want to try to save some money. I think it's really nice of Sanderson to actually delay the Kickstarter campaign for Words of Radiance because he also said that he wants to fulfill his promises on the Four Secret novels first, at least one or two novels first, before doing another Kickstarter project. And I totally agree with this business practice. Plus, regarding the shipping and delivery of the book itself, nothing will change. Even if the Kickstarter campaign actually starts in March, uh, the initial plan was in March, the shipping of Words of Radiance Letter Bounds will still be shipped in late 2023 or early 2024. So nothing changed except that the Kickstarter campaign will begin. So pretty much nothing will change except that the Kickstarter campaign for Words of Radiance Later Bound Edition will begin in uh, this fall. And now the last thing to spotlight from State of Sanderson 2022, and it is most likely the most important one, the Audible situation. I think if you're active in the fantasy or self-published fantasy community, I think you will know about the Audible situation that Brandon Sanderson address in his state of Sanderson already. If you don't know about it, I encourage you to check the state of Sanderson. This is an important issue and I think it is very important for readers to know about this. But to keep this brief, apparently Audible share only about 40% of the sales to the authors. This is only if the author or sub-published fantasy author are actually exclusive to Audible or Amazon. If the audiobooks of the self-published authors are not exclusive to Amazon or Audible, they get only 25% of the sales. And that is insane. It is insane. I didn't know about this at all. I know that some uh, self-published fantasy authors have talked to me about how Audible's payment is kind of insane and unfair, but it's they cannot do anything about this. Without Amazon, Kindle, Animated, or Audible, it is very hard for self-published authors to have a career in writing. They are essential to self-published fantasy authors. Amazon, Kindle, Animated, and Audible are essentially a necessity for self-published fantasy authors to have a career now. So it is understandable that most self-published authors cannot do anything about this situation unless they have immense power. But I think this is why I think what Brandon Sanderson is doing here is amazing and incredible. Look, Sanderson has always been one of my favorite authors. I love his books so much. Without Miss Bond Trilogy, I don't think I would have become a fantasy reader. But I think what Sanderson is doing right now, whether you love or hate his books, I think what he's doing right now is admirable. I don't see any other authors as successful as him or maybe even more successful doing this kind of thing to stand up against Audible's business practice. And keeping this in mind, Sanderson also has decided to actually not publish 
publish uh, his secret novels through Audible for any time soon. And I think this is incredible. Sanderson is standing up for self-published authors because he has the power and he can do it. Whether Sanderson's stance will be fruitful in the future or not, I guess we'll find out eventually. But I think this first step is important. Without it, nothing will ever change. No solution will appear, no alternative will appear. And speaking of alternative, I have a big announcement to make. And this is a YouTube channel called Epic Fantasy Audiobooks. But first things first, this is not my project. So last week, Zach Argal, the author behind Five Silver Rings short story and also a Threat Light Trilogy, he approached me with a project that he's working on. So this project, as I said, is a new YouTube channel called Epic Fantasy Audiobooks. This channel will feature completely free audiobooks from high quality indie and self-published authors. Currently, they are 21 books from five authors committed to be released on the channel. Each of these authors have chosen to not be Audible exclusive. Let that sink in. By making their audiobooks not Audible exclusive, they receive only 25% of their sales. The full first audiobook in five different series have been uploaded to their channel. The free audiobooks published today on the channel will be Voice of War by Zach Argyle, The Gifts of Pandora by Matt Larkin, Bletch Age by Virginia McLean, Daughter of Blood and Fury by Levi Jacobs, and Eye of Obscurance by Jeffrey Kohanek. Obviously, they cannot make any money from these free audiobooks yet until they pass the YouTube monetization threshold. So if you're watching this, make sure to subscribe to their channel. Make sure to watch their audiobooks. Make sure to listen to their audiobooks. The sooner they pass the monetization threshold, the sooner they can recruit more self-published fantasy authors to publish their audiobooks through this YouTube channel. So it might take a while, but in the end, this will be a win-win situation for both readers and authors. So yeah, make sure to check out the channel. So yeah, that is a big announcement, but that's not the only big self-published fantasy announcement I want to talk about today. The other one is about The Way of Eden by Philip Chase, or to be more precise about the Eden Trilogy by Philip Chase. So Philip Chase is a dear friend of mine, also a booktuber I admire, announced that he will self-publish his trilogy, all of them, within this year, March 2023, June 2023 and September 2023. The titles of the book are The Way of Eden, Book 1, The Prophet of Eden, Book 2, and also Book 3, The Return of Eden. Sorry if I mispronounced your titles, Philip, but I am certainly looking forward to reading your books as soon as possible. Congratulations once again. And yes, if you haven't subscribed to Philip Chase's channel yet, make sure to check out his channel. And moving on to the topic of Kickstarter campaign, I have two self published fantasy or sci-fi books to spotlight today. And the first one is about the second book in the modern of Learning series by Nobody103 or Domagoch Kurmai. I'm so looking forward to this one. As I said, Mother of Learning is one of my top priority series to start and finish this year. I am so looking forward to owning the hardcover of Mother of Learning R2. Why? Well, because yesterday it was my birthday, and yesterday, this book that I ordered last year, it came. This is the hardcover edition of Mother of Learning Arc 1 by Nobody103 or Domagoch Kurmai. This is published by Raidmark. This is my first hardcover of Raidmark, and yes, this is beautifully produced. This is the spine, this is the back cover, and also take a look at this and paper. This is so beautiful. This one is uh, illustrated by Daniel Kamarudin, and take a look at the back and paper. This is it. And this one is illustrated by Astur Misoa, and I love this one. Love this hardcover so much, and I look forward to reading it probably in February. I have heard so many amazing things about this one and I cannot wait to start reading the series using this hardcover. I already own the ebook of the second and third book as well. The other sub published fantasy Kickstarter campaign I want to spotlight is about The Price of Power by Michael Michel. Now for this one, I haven't read it, but so far the early reviews for The Price of Power have been very positive and I think this one is worth taking a look. Based on the reviews I've read, if you love books by Joe Abercrombie and also Grim Dark Fantasy. And now let's move on to the next section of of today's SFS Spotlight, it is time to talk about cover reveals. The next eight topics are all about cover reveals. And the first one is Subterranean Press has revealed the cover art to their special edition of Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. Yes, Live Ship Traders is finally getting a special edition. This has been a long time coming, and I don't know whether I will be able to afford this one or not, but the cover art, look at this. This one is done by John Ho, and I think it looks phenomenal. Take a look at this. 
this one is just amazing. Ship of Magic is also one of my favorite books by Robin Hobb and I think this cover art looks magnificent. It is amazing and I cannot wait to see how the hot cover will turn out eventually. And moving on to the next cover reveal, this is for Traitor of Red Winter by Ed McDonald. This one will be released in October 2023. Just like the first book, Daughter of Red Winter, uh, the cover art is done by Galen Dara. And I think this cover art, uh, the cover art to Traitor of Red Winter, is vastly superior to the first book, Daughter of Red Winter, which is already stunning. But even though I own the advanced reading copy for Daughter of Red Winter for quite a while now, I still have to admit that I haven't started reading this series yet. But I've read Blackwing by Ed McDonald and I love that one. Hopefully, I will love Daughter of Red Winter and also Traitor of Red Winter whenever I get around to them. But this cover art, as I said, looks amazing. And speaking of amazing cover art, the next cover reveal I would like to talk about, well, this is not an official cover reveal. I just spotted this on Amazon UK, but this is for the book that wouldn't burn by Mark Lawrence. This is the UK edition and it is illustrated by Tom Roberts. This is just stunning. This is one of the most beautiful cover art that I've seen. After seeing this cover art, I instantly pre-ordered this hardcover. I don't need to know anything else. Based on what I've heard so far, this one will be a fantasy book about books by Mark Lawrence. I look forward to reading this and I look forward to owning the hardcover. Cannot wait for it. The next two cover reveals will be for self published fantasy books. And the first one is for The Battle of Medicine Rocks by Rachel Aaron. This is the sequel to The Last Stand of Mary Goodcrow. The cover art is done by Louisa Pressler. And again, just like the first book, I think the cover art looks absolutely awesome. If I have to choose, I still like the cover art to the first book, The Last Stand of Mary Goodcrow, better. But again, this cover art is stunning. But again, the artist Louisa Pressler did another amazing job on the cover art. Rachel Aaron, I think, so far has uh, five books. Five books with the cover art illustrated by the artist and all of them looks great. And moving on to the next spotlight, this will be for a cover reveal with an illustration by Felix Ortiz and again designed by Sean King. And this one is for The Bloody Chorus by John Marco. I haven't read anything by John Marco yet, but I really love this cover art. I don't know anything about this book. I don't know anything about pretty much John Marco's books yet. But I think I've heard from plenty of reviewers that his books were great and I think this cover art definitely looks awesome. I mean, it's Felix Ortiz. He keeps getting better and better with each year. The remaining three cover reveals I would like to talk about today, all of them are foreign edition. Or for the first one, well, for me, it is not foreign because this is local. <laughs> the cover art to the Indonesian edition of The Burning God by R.F. Kuang has been revealed and I think this one looks awesome. I love this cover art. The cover art to the Poppy War Trilogy, the Indonesian edition, all of them looks amazing in my opinion. And just like the previous two books in the series, the cover art to The Burning God or Sang Dewa Api in Indonesia is illustrated by David Adin Arias. I'll go to my local bookstore as soon as possible and try to see this one in person once this is published. And then the remaining two cover reveals are both for foreign editions or to be more precise, French edition of a fantasy book. And the first one is Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This cover art looks great and this is another reminder that I have to continue with this series. I think if I compare this cover art to the US or UK cover art, this one, the French edition, actually looks much, much better. And I will say the same thing for the next cover reveal and the last cover reveal on today's SFF Spotlight. And this one is for Tower Lord by Anthony Ryan. This is the French edition and it is definitely by far better than the US or UK cover art. Look at it. These are amazing and this is volume 1 and volume 2 of Tower Lord. Apparently, it will be divided into two volumes and yes, I think this one, the cover art, is vastly superior than the US or UK edition. And now we arrive at the last section of SFF Spotlight and it is to talk about new noteworthy release. I have three books to talk about and the first one is That's Beating Heart by Rob J. Hayes. This is the fifth and final book in the War Eternal series. So if you've been waiting for this series to be completed before you dive into the series, before you started reading the series, now is your chance. Rob J. Hayes write book so fast <laughs> lately and it is hard for me to catch up to his books. But I look forward to reading this series. Someday I heard many great things about it. And then the next noteworthy release is for The Last Ranger by J.D.L. Russell. This is, if I'm not mistaken, an epic fantasy book hugely inspired by Horizon Zero Dawn video game. And also I think the author has mentioned that the main character is inspired by Aloy, the main character from Horizon Zero Dawn, and also uh, Ellie from The Last of Us. And finally, the last noteworthy release and also 
the last spotlight of today's video. And this is for Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. The ebook of the premium edition of Tress of the Emerald Sea is available to Kickstarter backers now. I have read and reviewed this book. I love this one. But if you're waiting for the mass market edition, the mass market ebook edition, this one will be published on January 10th, so tomorrow. So yeah, it is time to move on the anger over the title and also the cover art of this book. Seriously, it is time to move on past that. I mean, Dragonsteel themselves have actually revealed the cover art title and also the interior art on their Instagram page. I think it is practically impossible if you do not want to get spoiled on a book title. I mean, it is a book title. The only way for you to avoid knowing a book title is for you to actually avoid using internet. Seriously, that's really the only way. So yeah, the ebook of the mass market edition published by Torbox and Golangs will be published uh, tomorrow. So yeah, that's the end of today's SFS Spotlight video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you get something out of it. And once again, just as a reminder, please make sure to check out Epic Fantasy Audiobooks channel and make sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign I mentioned. Do let me know what you think about this news I spotlight on today's video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.